Businesses around the world are being hit with the effects of COVID-19, but few are being hit as hard as the airline industry. In the US, the big three, United American and Delta, have canceled thousands of flights because of lack of demand, but also because of government mandate. But as they do, where are these planes going? Planes are designed to fly, not to sit. So airlines try to keep them airborne as much as possible, but they can't fly right now and they're being forced to ground a lot of their fleet. In this video, we'll explain the toll that long-term storage has on planes and what airlines will have to do if these birds are ever to fly again. As COVID-19 has spread across the planet, airlines have scrambled to adjust their fleets as they have slashed their capacity and limited their routes. We aren't talking about dozens of grounded aircraft, we're talking about hundreds. The three major US airlines collectively have over 4,500 aircraft in their fleets. One illustration is this map of United's route reduction from February 2020 to April 2020. The last significant event that crippled the airline industry was the September 11, 2001 attacks. Planes were grounded for three days and demand greatly reduced afterwards. This mass grounding is more significant because these planes will be grounded for months, not days. Most airports don't have nearly enough space or the capacity to put planes in long-term storage. So airlines are dividing their fleets up among longer-term storage facilities. Surprisingly, the desert is one of the best places to keep grounded planes. The dry climate and abundant space makes the American Southwest home to numerous aircraft storage facilities, crudely known as boneyards. Canal Air Park in Marana, Arizona is one of these desert facilities that has taken on droves of airliners from Delta in the wake of COVID-19. Storing aircraft is a lot more complicated than just pulling the parking brake or shutting off the engines. While an aircraft is in service, crews and flight systems are constantly checking to make sure that everything is airworthy. But parking one for more than a few days significantly increases the risk that a plane will not be fully protected or that all of its systems won't be fully functioning. For that reason, Ascent Aviation at Pinal Air Park divide aircraft into two categories, active parking and long-term storage. Active parking keeps airplanes in airworthy condition. This is an expensive and maintenance heavy process that is model specific and includes the need to power up the aircraft at least every two weeks to lubricate parts. Open ports are covered, but the aircraft is actively kept ready to fly. To put an airplane in long-term storage is a two week process with a huge upfront cost, but it requires less maintenance in the long run. The engines can be filled with preservative oil, ports are covered and gaps in the fuselage are sealed. Protective coatings cover windows and landing gear. Once an airplane is in storage, there's no need to regularly power up systems. At Pinal Air Park, an aircraft can remain in storage for two years before it must be brought back to operability and do a short non-revenue flight. That's an expensive process and it may lead to owners opting to selling their aircraft for parts instead. Unfortunately, many of Delta's older planes that are arriving at Pinal will likely meet this fate and will never take to the skies again. Once demand returns, airlines will start to bring their airplanes out of storage. But depending on the aircraft type, this could take hundreds of man hours per plane. Even if demand surged tomorrow, it would be months before airlines had their entire fleets in the air again. For now, they'll remain tucked away in obscure facilities around the world.